like this. Take courage. None of you will lose your life. Even though the ship will go down. I'm going to read that again. It says take courage because none of you will lose your life. They say the same for the ship because this ship Don't go down with the ship. If you don't mind, contact someone. Make contact with somebody because you want God to bless your neighbor as well as yourself. Father, we thank you now. We don't take this time we have together lightly. We're about to receive a word from you. God, this word is going to find somebody. It's going to give someone the answers they were looking for. This word is going to open somebody else up to more of you. This word is going to heal. This word is going to deliver. This word is going to set somebody free. But any way you bless us, Lord, we'll be satisfied. So speak to every heart in this room. As we yield ourselves over totally and completely to you. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Speak, Lord. We, we are anxious to hear. Speak, Father, give us direction. Once you give us direction, we will follow you. Thank you for your word in advance. And for the power to transform lives that comes along with your word. We bless you in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Before you take your seat, before you take your seat, grab a neighbor by the hand and say this. If you don't need nothing, don't, don't say nothing. Come on, tell them again. If you don't need nothing, don't say nothing. But if you need the Lord to do something in your life, make a sound. Glory to God. I need him to do something. I need him. I need God to do something. For well, all of you who grab a hold of that today, God says he's going to show up in every situation in your life. Every situation in your life. The Holy Ghost has some stuff for you that he's been holding. 
Lord have mercy. He's been holding on to things you've been praying about, fasting about, even things you've forgotten you prayed about. Holy Spirit says he's been holding things that's broken and things that's falling apart, things that have been held up, things that, that you need to move out of your way. God says the Holy Spirit's been waiting for you to get ready to handle what he has for you. And get this, he's listening. He's listening for a sound that will call him into your presence. Healing was hovering over your head. Breakthrough was hovering over your head. And at this moment, this moment that you stepped into contained the desires of your heart, trying to make you ready for something. This moment contains the desires of your heart and the things you've been praying for, the things the devil stole from you, the things that, that, that got broken and you thought could never be repaired. God said that that stuff is about to come your way. But listen, listen, listen. Look, and, and, and look, once you receive what God has for you, it's not going to come. He said that it, what he has for you is not going to come like a toy in the box. That when you open it up, you find pieces everywhere and it says assembly required. God said when this thing comes, it's going to fully be fully put together. And you ain't going to have to work on nothing because it's already assembled. It's already assembled and waiting for you to start riding. Anybody ready to ride today? Well, look, the Holy Spirit has one rule. He only comes when a sound is made. He is listening for a sound in earth that matches the sound in heaven. A sound that declares that Jesus is Lord. A sound that declares there's nobody like Jesus. A sound that declares that he is the only one that can lift you up the turn. like when the Holy Ghost was fully come. But I want to tell you he's fully come anytime two of you are touching and agreeing. He says, I'm going to step all of me into wherever two of you got to find somebody that will agree that Jesus is Lord.
the past God delivered and we go right back to the hall pit. This time, you ain't going back. I said this time you're not going back. In the preceding chapters of, of the verse that we read when you're hearing, Paul is talking passionately about his, his endeavor to do God's work. Paul had it mixed up. Paul was upset because this new sect of believers had come on the scene. And they were going around talking about this man named Jesus of Nazareth, his Lord and King. Paul says he became infuriated with all of those people professing Jesus to be Lord. And he says, I made it my personal mission to wipe every believer off of the face of the earth. He says, I threw him in jail. He says, I cast my vote when it came up whether, whether we should have them put to death or should they live. I voted that they be put to death. Every Christian. I wanted all of them dead. I wanted all of them gone. And Paul says, I thought I was doing God's will until I ran into Jesus myself. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He says, I ran into Jesus myself and something happened to me. Y'all ain't hear me. He was standing there. You don't understand. He's on trial, y'all. And he's standing there in front of uh, Festus and Agrippa. And he's trying to explain where he came from. Paul says, I tried to take every one of them saved folk head off. But I ran into Jesus and he did a work on my life. And now, Festus, now Agrippa, I stand in front of you and I say, I know I've been changed. God, I wish I had a witness right there. Paul says, I know I've been changed. He says, I know I've been changed. Anybody been changed in the house today? I said, anybody in the house that's been changed? I know I've been changed. Those things I used to do, that's what we say. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. Places I used to go, I don't do, I don't go anymore. In other words, my life, watch this, my life, if I'm changed, my life bears evidence that I am what I say I am. It ain't just me talking change. My life go prove to you. He says, my life don't prove to you that I've changed. And the change that you see is not what saved me. The change that you see me do is because I am saved. Somebody shout, I'm changed. So, so if I'm changed, I'm not a deacon on Sunday and go to the strip club on Friday. If I'm changed. If I'm changed, I don't run up and down the aisles on Sunday trying to get my praise on and then run trying to run somewhere on Friday evening trying to get my freak on. Because my life will bear evidence of the fact that I'm changed. I said my life will bear some evidence. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. I said, I'm not perfect, but I'm not where I used to be. God has brought me a mighty, a mighty long way. Can I get a witness in the house today? He brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. I'm going to talk to you for the next few moments. I'm changing, I'm turning now. Because I want to talk to you about a sinking ship. And I want to encourage you not to go down with the ship. In the text, Paul is on his way to Rome and boards a ship. And the ship has problems from day one. Every time they turn around, they're going into one storm after another. If it ain't one storm, it's another storm. If it ain't one storm, if something ain't wrong over here, something's wrong over there. If it ain't the storm, it's the ship. If the storm ain't got us off course, something on the ship breaking down. Y'all are going to hear me today. So now Paul receives 
a word from God. And he has to share this word with the captain of the ship and the centurion and the soldiers and the crew on the ship along with the other prisoners who are aboard this ship. And this is a word that nobody wants to hear. This word that Paul is about to give them is a word that, that nobody wants to hear. In the middle of their, in the middle of this life threatening storm, in the middle of their struggling to get ahead and, and trying to move forward. Paul gets a word with, gets a word from God that says this. Paul stands up in front of everybody on the ship who's rowing as hard as they can, who's struggling as hard as they can, who's working to keep this ship afloat. Paul stands up and says, this ship ain't going to make it. No, my God. Mm. My God. This vessel that we're, that we're on is not going to go where we intended for it to go. The thing that we've given ourselves to is not strong enough to handle the storm that we're in. And I know you've been praying. I know you've been fasting. And I know you've been wanting God to move this thing. But sometimes, sometimes God wants you to know this ship is going to fall apart. Ship is a metaphor. It could be a metaphor for a lot of different things. Ship is a metaphor for your relationship, yes, metaphor for your career, yes. could be a metaphor for your connections, your friends. Yes. Ship can be a metaphor for whatever is going on in your life. But sometimes you've got to realize that, that this ship is falling apart. Come on. Come on, Paul. It's not the word we want to hear. My God. We want to hear a word like God's going to make everything all right. We want to hear this too shall pass. Yes. We want to hear we're coming out of this. We want to hear if I just hold out a little while longer, God's going to make everything all right. But sometimes God gives you undeniable evidence that the ship that you're on ain't going to make it. This thing is about to end. This thing not going to go as far as you thought it was going to go. This thing is about to come to a crashing halt. And at some point, you've got to realize you better get off that ship. Yes, sir. I know you're quiet right now because you'd rather hear me preach. God's going to fix it. But sometimes you need to hear it's falling apart. reason why it was hard for the soldiers to hear this word, the same reason it's hard for some of us to hear this word, is because we had high expectations for the ship. We had high hopes for the ship. Because nobody gets on the ship thinking it's going to fall apart. If I knew it was going to end like this, never would have said I do. I knew it was going to end like this. If I knew it was going to go down like this, I would have, I would have pushed that joke out of my life for a long time ago. If I knew the job was going to end like this, I wouldn't have quit my old job to go there. If I knew that they were going to stab me in my back, I never would have befriended them. If I knew my child was going to end up on bad and busted, I never would have let them go to that party. Nobody gets on the ship thinking it's going to sink. And it's hard to accept the fact that the ship is falling apart when you've been praying for the ship. When you had your dreams of happily ever after. When you had dreams of a wonderful life. Now, at this stage in your life, you've been waiting for a word. You've been waiting for God to speak. And now when God speaks, He tells you it ain't going to last. Get this, these men on this ship, they were skilled soldiers. They knew how to navigate in a storm. They knew how to, they've been in a storm before, but the problem is, they believed they had the skills necessary to keep the ship safe in the storm. It's hard to accept. The ship's going to fall apart. 
when you think you've got the skills necessary to keep it working. You prayed about it. You had therapy. You've done all you know to do. But sometimes God's word is no. This ship will fall apart. No matter how good you are at what you do, you don't have the skill set to keep together what God has said. It's going to fall apart. I know you used to lay it on them before. And that used to work because you knew how to lay it down. That ain't working now. You don't have the skill set. You don't have the skill set to make work what you used to be able to make work. Come on, we, we've, we've been through storms before. We've had adversity before and we, we've come through. We, we've been through hard times before and every time we, we came through, why would it be any different this time? You keep telling yourself, I, 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 I've been here too long to leave this ship. I've invested too much to leave this ship. I paid too high a price to leave this ship. I've got to, why should I stop fighting? I've been fighting all these years. Church tell me keep on fighting. But now God is telling me this ship is going down. Hard to hear God say when something you love is coming to an end. So the question is, what made this ship fall apart? Why didn't God fix it? Why didn't God step in? Why did God allow something to fall apart that he knew I cared about? Paul says, here's why the ship is falling apart. He said, God told you when you were in Crete not to say it. But no, you had to do it your way. God said, don't move. You went ahead and moved anyhow. Since you moved anyhow, it doesn't matter how much you pray, how skillful you are, and how much you've been through. The destruction you're experiencing is the evidence, is the inevitable consequence of your disobedience. Lord have mercy, y'all might be quiet in here today. And because you struck out on your own without, without a word to undergird your ship, you decided to sail and not take the word to undergird you. Because you have nothing but water holding you up. When the storm gets angry enough and decides I ain't holding you no more, you got nothing. The ship has no other option but to fall apart. Second reason, he says, I told you not to sail because it was winter. He says, winter is coming. Mm -hmm. So your problem is, you're selling in the wrong season. My God. And God wants you to know that everything you've been trying to get anyhow, he already has stored up for you. Woo! But because you are not waiting on God's time, yeah. and you decide to strike out in winter, the season go overtake you. This is not the time to set sail. This is the time to sit still. May not be the time to say I do. <laughs> this may be the time for you to be by yourself. And you're ready to say I do. And thirdly, not only, not only did you set sail in the wrong season, Paul tells them, 
y'all got on the wrong ship. Because the ship that you're on is not made to handle the winter weather. Y'all are hear me today. And you got aboard of something thinking you could make it work because of your skill set. Y'all are hear me today. Oh, I can change him. He ain't like he ought to be today, but I got, I got something that'll change him. But you don't understand. That ship wasn't designed to sail when you're trying to get the sail. You're thinking you could change. You could change what God has created to be what it is. Listen, whatever it is, it's what it is. It is what it is. Come on, look at somebody and say, it is what it is. Listen, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. I think I need to say that again. When that joker shows you his true color, you better believe that's who he is. Don't let him go, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. No, stop falling for that. If he slapped you one time, Folk won't show you their true colors. Folk won't show you their true colors until they get in trouble. And can I tell you, young ladies, can I tell you, if you're married and you're dating, you're really not dating him. You're dating his representative. Can I tell you, when you go out with him, that ain't the real him. That's the him he sent ahead of him so he could get you. So he put on a representative that's all polished up. And looks good, and you think you're getting that when that was, and when it's time to get married, you come down here and you marry the real old deal. When people show you who they are, believe them. God gives Paul a word. And Paul says, this ship is going to fall apart. But he says, but I got some good news. For somebody that's, that's on a ship that's falling apart, I got some good news. For somebody that's in the situation you've been praying to get out of and you have, you don't see no way, you don't know how there's going to be a way, i got some good news. Because God never, God never gives you a, a negative word without coming behind that word to show you what he really has for you. So watch what God says. Now, now when I tell you what God, when I tell you what he says, this is going to be this is going to be the easiest amen I've gotten all day long. If you don't say amen right here, I want you to just get up and leave the church. If your neighbor don't say amen, check their pulse because they're dead. God says, God says, Paul, the ship won't make it, but you will. Enough word to somebody give y'all praise right there. You ought to say amen. You ought to say thank you, Jesus. You ought to say glory to God. You ought to shout hallelujah. You ought to shout, won't he do it? You ought to shout, ooh, we. Out, but you're coming out. 
The ship ain't going all the way. It's still going all the way. God said, I don't need the ship. My hand is not on the ship. My hand is on you. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Find one more person tell them I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. My ship might be breaking up, but I'm going to make it. My ship might be falling apart, but I'm going to make it. I may end up by myself, but I'm going to make it. It might hurt like a dickens, but I'm gonna make it. I, I, I can't see God right now, but I know by faith I'm gonna make it. It's easy to be faithful when you feel God. It's easy to be committed when God is there constantly reaffirming to you the fact that He loves you. Have you come to a place in your walk with God that if he, if he withdraws himself from you for a season and your ship starts breaking up, can you say like Paul said, I am persuaded. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. No height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able, even in my dark seasons, even when I can't see God, nothing will be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. My ship is falling apart, but I ain't going back. I'm not going to backslide. I ain't going to turn around. I ain't going to quit coming to church. Praise when all your bills are paid. It's easy to praise God when your children are blessed. It's easy to praise when you can come in this house and with the other saints feel the presence of God. But will you be faithful when things are falling apart? There'll come a time when things seem to be falling apart in your life. That's why you got to be very sure you have a sure grip on God. Here's the last promise. God said to Paul, it's Paul because you held on to me. Because you held on by everything was breaking. Because you didn't quit coming to church when things got rough. You didn't go back and pick up your nets and go fishing again. Because you held on to me, Paul, not only will you make it, but he said, everybody on the ship. Y'all ain't hearing me. No, you ain't getting it. You ain't getting it. He said, Paul, because of you, everybody on the ship. Because of their relationship with me, I'm blessing them because you're. 